So I wanted to talk about, a little bit about transformations and then matrices that help us understand them. So um, just to use our favorite example of a transformation, um, if we start here in the R theta plane, we could have like, for example, R1, R is 1, 2, and 3. Theta is, try to get my scale here right, pi over 2, pi, and so on. And so, and then we have a transformation. So x, y is a function, the polar coordinate function of r and theta, and it's r cos theta, r sine theta. And that takes us over to the x, y plane. So here we're in the x, y plane. And so if you start with some little region, some region of any kind really, it doesn't have to be little, over here, it maps to over there. So we usually we use a rectangle, let's say from let's say, I don't know, 0 to 2, from pi over 2 to pi, or something like that, over here. Let's see, r is going from 0 to 2, and theta is going from pi over 2 to pi. So I guess that's something like this sector here. It maps over to there, yeah? OK. So I could divide this or something, and those lines would go to here and here. OK. And then we want to know. How are areas over here related to areas over here? I think it's pretty clear already. These rectangles all have the same area, but these rectangles over here, these are not rectangles. These regions over here don't have the same area. So you might want to know, like, what is the area multiplier? Um, and we have figured out that that's the um, determinant of the Jacobian matrix. So you make this matrix, so the Jacobian matrix is like partial of x with respect to r, partial of x with respect to theta, partial of y with respect to r, partial of y with respect to theta. And we've calculated this before. It's something. Um, and it's determinant of the Jacobian, in this case, is r. So um, that tells you that the bigger your r is, the more your region is expanded in area. So for instance, if you take a little rectangle, let's see, let's try to map these. Um, so if I take, let's say, theta is constant at pi over 2, and r is going from 1 to 2. Theta is constant at pi over 2, and r is going from 0 to 2. That would be here. And then if I had this, theta is constant at pi, and r is going from 1 to 2. It is constant at pi. OK, so that would go to here. So you can see how this rectangle is sort of moved around. And if you take a little rectangle like, like close here to the origin, where r is close to 0, and theta is close to pi over 2, well, it turns into this tiny little sliver that you might not even be able to see far away. But if we take a rectangle up here, where r is close to 2 and theta is close to pi, let's see, I've gone about a third of the way along, so it looks something like this. So here, and I've drawn this, I've tried to draw this roughly to scale, so this thing got a lot smaller, but this thing got bigger, and the air expansion factor is, is actually r. So in this case, r equals 2, allegedly it got about twice as big, that looks plausible based on this picture. Here the expansion factor is 0, it got roughly zero times as big. That seems plausible based on the picture. Um, but it's different in different places. So if you want to know the exact area expansion factor, it only works on really tiny rectangles. So that's why we can think about the limit definition here. That, that what? That, um, that the difference uh, d of x, y over d of u v, that's the determinant of the Jacobian, times um, d u d v will give you dx dy. And so what this should make you think of is d u d v. That's the dimensions, d u, uh, well, in this case, I guess, r and theta. But dr and d theta are the dimensions of a tiny rectangle over here. And then dx dy are the dimensions of the image shape. And you have to multiply by this expansion factor. That's the idea. Questions or ideas?
So when the, when the question asks about local and limit ideas, it means locally areas are multiplied by zero here, locally areas are multiplied by two up here. Um, the rectangles have to be really small for it to be exactly right. Or your transformation has to be linear. So you all took linear algebra. If you have a linear transformation, then the expansion factor is exactly the area expansion. Just like, so this is in, um, similar to, for a single variable calculus, you could be thinking, you should always be thinking down a dimension when you can. So you should be thinking of if you have a curve and you calculate the slope, let's say we know the slope right here. Well, I have a change in x, and I'm interested in knowing the exact change in y here. Well, if I want to know the change in y, I can just multiply the change in x by the slope, basically. But it's going to be less accurate the further I am away. So maybe the tangent line looks like this. So if I multiply change in x times the slope, I'll tell you that this is what you get, whereas truly, it's supposed to be this. But the smaller your change in x is, the more accurate it will be. So in the limit, the slope really is the ratio of change in y to change in x. And over here, in the limit, as the rectangle gets really small, the area of expansion factor really is the ratio of dx to y to the u dv. 